I'd like to start today's discussion by acknowledging that while all the past alpha boot camps were based on official articles giving details of their design concepts, today's episode relies on statements of what they want to achieve, but they don't really have the design fully fleshed out yet. We don't have an exploration and detection article that we can pull from. Instead, what we do have is an amazing summary by Quintero, who pulled together all of the different pieces of information and posts that the devs have made around this subject. And that's the information we're using. So please take everything today with a grain of salt because it is more subject to change than anything else we've spoken of. All right, with that said, let's get started with detection. Now, one of the most important aspects to understand about star citizens is that detection will not be binary. Binary detection is works like this, like StarCraft or League of Legends. You have that circle of area around you that you can see, right? And outside of that is the fog of war. If an enemy is inside that circle, pop, you can see them. If they're outside that circle, boom, they disappear and you have no idea where they are. Uh, that's how many games work with regards to detection. In Star Citizen, that is not the case. Let's take a hypothetical example. You're in a ship, you're trying to remain unseen, and there's an enemy trying to hunt you. Now, that enemy is 10 kilometers away, and his radar, his maximum range on his radar, the radar that he's using, is 8 kilometers. As long as you're beyond 8 kilometers, there is no way he'll ever pick you up. However, once you get within eight kilometers, he might pick you up. And once you get within five kilometers, he'll have you 100%. So there's no question that if he gets within five kilometers of you, he will detect you. But between five and eight, there's some uncertainty. Maybe he will detect you. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll get a, a ping and it'll pop up on his scanner and then disappear. And maybe he'll show up. You'll show up on his scanner, but it'll be inaccurate. Maybe it'll show you as a cruiser when in fact you're a frigate. Or maybe he'll show uh, uh, you as an asteroid and he won't be able to determine the difference. So it's qu we're not quite sure exactly how that uncertainty will work. What I've been discussing is some of the thoughts and the, the, the theories about how it will work. Uh, maybe from the other side your radar will give you a bunch of false pings every once in a while. It'll, you know, ping a space whale and, and then it'll disappear. And so you won't be able to know if you get a ping, is it definitely something or is it just a, a, something that the radar will later when it gets closer will say, oh, nope, that's just a piece of asteroid that, that broke off from somewhere. Uh, so you won't necessarily know that every ping within that uncertain range is an enemy contact. Now, another very important piece is that there's no invisible ships. You're, there's no cloaking device that will make your ship invisible to the naked eye, which means no matter how good your counter detection is, no matter how bad the enemy's sensors are, they will still be able to see you with you're within a certain uh, distance so that your ship is big enough to be seen. Now, another important facet of Star Citizen's detection system is that position and information systems are separated. You'll have some sensors whose job is to tell you where contacts are in a three-dimensional space around you, and other systems whose job it is to tell you what that contact is and give you details, like what kind of weapons it's carrying, what kind of hull it is, what kind of power plant it has, etc., etc. Now, in addition to the split between position and information systems, there is also the split between active systems and passive systems. You can think of passive systems like sitting there listening for other ships to emit signals that your ship can detect. For example, a heat signature from the engine or an electromagnetic signature from the power plant. The bigger the ship, the bigger those signatures. And the faster it's going and the more power it's churning through, the bigger those signals. But if a ship is really, really quiet, they turn down all their systems, they lower their heat signature, it becomes very difficult to detect them on passive systems. So that's the disadvantage of passive sensors. They're not as effective against somebody who's trying to stay hidden. On the other hand, an active system is one that sends out a signal and waits for a return. Like active radar would be you send out a radar pulse and then it bounces off of the target and you are able to determine its size and speed and position based on that return. 
Now, active systems have the advantage of being able to find people even if they're being really, really low and trying to be stealthy. You can still find them. The disadvantage of active sensors is that you give away your own position to anyone who is listening passively. Oftentimes, you give away your own position to someone who's way further away than your actual detection range. The final major piece of control you will have over your sensor systems is how large an area you want to scan. In general, if you want to scan everything around you 360 degrees in all three dimensions, you're going to have a much more limited range than if you choose a narrow cone directly in front of your ship of like 10 to 15 degrees and scan just in that direction, you will have a much longer range on that narrow scan. A few other small pieces of information that we've picked up include the fact that radar shadowing will be modeled. This means that you could hide behind an asteroid without line of sight to an enemy and their radar won't pick you up because it won't be able to go through the asteroid. On the same notion, you could hide some smaller ships behind an Idris frigate, for example, and the enemy won't see those smaller ships. They'll only see the frigate with their radar, and then suddenly the smaller ships can come out and ambush the enemy when they think they're only going up against an Idris. Another piece of information that we've gleaned is that you will not be able to put every sensor suite on any single ship in the game. You will have to pick and choose what kind of sensors you want to take out with you. They might include things like a combat sensor suite, which can scan the enemy's shield level, scan their weapon systems, find out what subsystems they have. Do they have any ECMs? Do they have jammers? Do they have flares? Things like that. Then maybe you'll have a, a piracy suite, which is designed for scanning enemy cargo rather than their systems. And then maybe you'll have an exploration suite, which will let you scan for jump points or hidden entities or very long range entities, like uh, maybe another one for mining which might let you scan for the contents of an asteroid, etc., etc. And lastly, the sharing of this information in combat is a key component to the command and control modules on the larger vessels. Essentially, their job will be to uh, take all the information that everybody in your fleet knows and redistribute it to everyone so that everybody can see everything. If you don't have one of those command and control modules on one of the ships in your fleet, then you probably will have trouble being able to share all of that information automatically throughout your systems. All right, so that's a good summary of everything that we know about detection and our ideas of how it's going to work for now. Uh, let's talk about exploration. Exploration is essentially applied detection uh, in, in order to find things. So what things are you trying to find? Well, jump points are one of the most lucrative and rare things to be found in the Star Citizen universe. A new jump point leading to a new system is something that would be extremely valuable, not only for the money that the UEE would pay you for that jump point, but also for the notoriety of being able to name that system after yourself or your mom or whatever you want within limits set by CIG, of course. I doubt very much we'll be traveling to the penis system anytime soon. But finding the jump point is only the first step. You then have to successfully navigate through the jump point for the first time and make it to the other side. Now, they've described jump point navigation as being a very skilled and difficult thing to do that will require specialized ships in order to accomplish. You need to use smaller ships. They've already stated that the Freelancer is the largest ship that can travel through a new jump point, an unmapped jump point. You can kind of think of the jump point uh, like a tunnel right, with a bunch of objects in there that you're going to be traveling through at super high speed that you have to be able to dodge all of those objects and make it through to the other side unscathed. Now, for jump points that have already been mapped, autopilot will take you through like that. You'll just boom, right through the jump point, you're on the other side, no problem, because the autopilot already knows what the jump point looks like in that tunnel, and it just takes the path that other ships have taken. Bam, done. But for a brand new jump point, you have to map it manually, and that is where the challenge will arise. 
They have also stated that players can manually travel through known jump points if they want to practice this uh, avoidance of the, the various hazards and obstacles concept. But again, jump points are the most rare and most lucrative. They're the white whale of exploration goals, essentially. The more common things that you're going to find are wrecked ships that you can salvage or asteroid fields that were previously undetected with rare resources that you can sell for a profit or maybe secret asteroid bases or rare unexpected encounters that only occur if you follow this anomaly that you manage to track down and, and make your way into some crazy event that doesn't happen to too many people. A lot of the money to come from exploration comes from information trading. If you find a really rare asteroid belt that has rare mineral X that'll, that is very desirable and expensive, but you don't have the mining equipment yourself, maybe your organization doesn't do a lot of mining, you can sell that on the open market. You can sell that information to NPCs or maybe other players that will then go and harvest it and you'll get some royalties based off that find. Another aspect of exploration that sounds really fun is the concept of tracking down enemy ships that have bounties on them. Maybe you're not one for combat. Maybe you really just like the stealthy, sneaky approach. You're more like a rogue, right, than a, than a warrior. Then what you might do is pack a tiny scout ship with tons of sensors and tons of scanners and tons of stealth capabilities, right? Very, very uh, contained power plants. So they don't give off a big signature. Then you go into the deep areas of space where there's many pirates and bad guys and you find the ones that have the highest bounties and you come back to civilized space and you sell the locations of those bounties to other players or to NPCs that then resell those to other players or NPC ships, bounty hunters that go off and actually attempt to kill those players and receive.